One way or the other, Marnie Abbott Peter was going to be a world champion, just like her next-door neighbor and idol, Nancy Green. At nine, Marnie's family moved to Enderby, and the up-and-comer raced toward her skiing dreams. Valedictorian and best all-round student in her grad class at AL Fortune Secondary, Marnie represented Enderby as its 1983 princess. But that winter, the 18-year-old's life would change in a terrible crash on Silver Star. The feeling in her legs was gone. Yet Marnie found a new inspiration, Rick Hansen shared with her his dream to wheel around the world, and in Marnie the competitive fire began to burn again. She resolved to show her family that her spirit was not diminished. She took to the pool, and at the 1986 Pan American Wheelchair Games left the field in her wake, powering to four gold medals and a silver. In 1988, Marnie took on a new challenge. Wheelchair basketball would never be the same. Marnie was classed as a 1.0 wheelchair athlete, the highest level of disability. Still, Marnie developed elite ball handling skills, making the national team in 1992 in time for the Barcelona Paralympics. At the one position, Marnie could do it all. Defend her position, quarterback the offense, read and react, thread passes, and shoot the lights out. With the world's only class one point guard at the helm, the Canadian team won its first Paralympic gold. Marnie's exceptional leadership made her the natural selection as Canada's flag bearer for the 1996 Atlanta Paralympics. The skill level of Abbott Peter and Team Canada transformed how the game was played and perceived, from a merely recreational activity to a true competitive amateur sport in Canada, and the golds kept coming. game for Canada's women's basketball team. They easily won their semi-final game to get here, extending their unbeaten streak in international tournaments to an amazing 42 games. Game 43 is against the home country favorites, Australia. It's going to make a really exciting game. I mean, uh, this is a dream come true for uh, both teams, so uh, it should be fun. The Sydney Superdome is packed for this game. It's being broadcast live across Australia. A long time remaining in this game. Canada very much in the ascendancy. And will be televised later here in Canada. It will be the most watched game in the history of this sport. And at halftime, Canada has a comfortable lead. Yet Frank is not about to lower his guard. We're expecting Australians to come charging back at us, so uh, we're going to try to focus moment by moment and uh, see what happens. Perhaps Frick expected too much from the Aussies in the second half, but more than likely, his team is just better. Australia never gets close. The Canadian women celebrate their third Paralympic gold medal in a row. Tim Frick has always downplayed the team's tremendous winning streak, but tonight he just can't hide what it means to him. In my dream, it was the uh, five Stanley Cups. When I was a little kid growing up watching the Montreal Canadiens, uh, that's what I wanted to do. Frick and the Canadian women have again set a new standard in this sport. Just think about it. 43 international tournament games without a loss. Now that's a sports dynasty. Led by some of the top players in the world, the Canadian women's team has built a winning legacy at the Paralympic Games. Canada remains the only team to have won three consecutive Paralympic gold medals. The Canadian women last medaled with a bronze at the 2004 Paralympics in Athens. Someday they're correct. Won't you come out to play, to come out to play? I've been living it down again. I'm gonna need to call your friends. In club play, Marnie's teams were perennial medalists at the Canadian Wheelchair Basketball Finals for more than a decade, and Abbott Peter was a regular on the tournament all-star team. Today, Marnie works for the BC Wheelchair Basketball Society, coaches the BC Provincial Women's Team, and coordinates BC's Let's Play program, which provides physical activity experiences to children with and without disabilities. Oh. 
first coaching BC's team at the 1993 Canada Games, Marty hasn't stopped passing along her knowledge and love of the game to the next generation of Paralympic hopefuls. Role models and mentors, probably Marnie Abbott because I've known her the longest. Um, I met her when I started playing basketball and she's a great athlete. Um, and yeah, I just I look up to her and she's been very helpful in um, giving me good advice. And, um, she's just an amazing person, great coach. A tremendous ambassador, Marnie welcomed the world as a torchbearer at Vancouver 2010. La flamme des Jeux Paralympiques d'hiver de Vancouver 2010 sera transmise et inspirera une nouvelle génération d'excellence. With a dream. BC Wheelchair Sports named Abbott Peter the female athlete of the century. BC Wheelchair Basketball went a step further, female athlete of the millennium. Marnie bounced back from a life-changing injury to change minds and change lives. She's helped elevate her sport to new heights and helped inspire others to rise above life's challenges. She's shown how far one person can go on wheels. The Okanagan Sports Hall of Fame proudly welcomes wheelchair globetrotter Marnie Abbott Peter.